Welcome back, my wealthy family. Once again, here with Rosendo Rodriguez, welding fly guy here in Houston, Texas. In today's video, we have an awesome, awesome, awesome video. Guess what? We're gonna be welding some titanium. Guess who's in the house? Travis Field. Thank you, Rosendo. So I was first here in December of 2018 with WeldTube, and, that, and ever since then I had a lot of opportunities and a lot of potential. So we're gonna be working with titanium. I'll explain a little bit about different uh, tools and mechanisms that you can use to make titanium easier. But that's the video. Visit weldlife.com and shop our best-selling premium welding goods shown in this video. So this part of the video, I'm gonna be showing how to clean the titanium prior to welding. The very first thing I'm gonna do when I, when I clean this material, I won't be using a grinder, absolutely not, because it creates friction, friction creates heat, but the, the grinding disc will embed different materials and particles into the titanium, contaminating it. Uh, but also, um, you know, with the friction, friction creates heat, and then you have the atmosphere, 21% oxygen, it starts oxidizing material with all that friction, that heat. So I'll, I'll be using kind of cold means, things that kind of keep uh, low, low energy expelled into material. That would be like 3M, uh, these uh, scotch bright pads. They're, they're very great. They're really great for uh, removing the oxides, especially on aluminum. Um, I'll be using uh, hand files to remove a lot of the metal. You can use carbide burrs for removing metal as well. So I like to use these recipient saws for prepping the material. And I like this brand uh, the best because, you know, the paint doesn't come off as bad, but it's, it's actually pretty good. And uh, most important, the stainless steel hand brush for removing, uh, you know, cleaning oxides and cleaning the material prior to welding. Now keep in mind, even the oils from your hands are enough to contaminate the filament metal. First off, I'll clean it with isopropylene alcohol. Wipe it off. This does evaporate quick, but I'll dry off the isopropylene alcohol. Let's dry it off. I'll come in with the uh, Scotch Brite to remove the oxides. And the last thing I'll do before I clean it again. So one end here has grade two titanium. The inspector might want to take a look at that. But on the other end here, I never cleaned the oxide off there. So sometimes I'll just snip it. From there, I'll come back with the isopropylene alcohol back on a wet rag here. Might remove any greases, oils, uh, whatever comes off the filament metal, be labeling, uh, clean it off like that. And I'll keep doing this until the towel is all nice and clean. From here, when I tack the pipe up and everything will be in conjunction here, um, what you could do is you can purge this with a two inch schedule 80, you can tack it without an inert gas if you're practicing in practice terms. Uh, you can tack it, you just a low deposition uh, melt for nice small tacks, bridging it. You'll put about three tacks on here, uh, minimum. You could get away, get away with two, but you could put three. Uh, but I could do it without uh, running an inert atmosphere inside here. Uh, but what happens is that if you expel too much energy, you will oxidize inside your root pass. Also, when you're welding, quite often you, the tip of the filament metal might be exposed to the atmosphere if it's hot. Uh, I like to uh, snip the end there. You just remove the oxide so the oxygen from that oxide does not embed into your weld puddle. And that goes for all the different metals. Now the fit up I'm using, I have a 1-8 gap. I have a feather's edge so there's no, no land on here. And uh, if I have any troubles where the gap might close up or anything, I'll just simply run a little hand file through it. It'll fit very, very easily. And it'll remove metal. Uh, also, if you use a reciprocating saw with a blade, you can kind of put it at an angle to remove metal. And it's very fast and efficient. So this 1-8 fill metal will fit very well into here. What I'm doing here is I'm tacking this uh, pipe coupon up to this piece I'm gonna be on, so I can kind of rest on here and do the kind of welding, whatever kind of welding I need to. So this is aluminum foil tape, and so you do not contaminate your weld puddle with a sticky residue. Uh, I'll take the nice backside, it's non-sticky. I'll kind of bend it over. So this is a nice non-sticky side. And I'll put that up against the sticky side here. So this nice non-sticky side here goes up against the, uh, the butt weld here for the piping. So I'll start probably, you do not want to start anywhere near tack in case there's oxidization. Put it up against here, kind of wrap around. Stop at that tack there. So my first area will actually be right, right in here for welding. Now the other thing too, 
So I have uh, argon inert gas coming in through the bottom here. I have stainless steel wool acting as a diffuser. Normally, you don't necessarily need a, a purge monitor or nothing. But doing these wall tests, you could pretty much have something like that, where it's just a, a big gap at the top there. Argon will come out and then it'll dissipate. I have a purge monitor here, so this kind of gives me an idea. You can get away without one if you're practicing and training all that, uh, but this is very effective. This kind of tells me how many parts per million of oxygen are, are inside the pipe. I could put in like that. I could turn the argon inert gas on and it'll tell me how much parts per million, how much oxygen is inside here. So essentially, for the trailing shield here, I, it needs to hug the pipe fully. If it starts lifting up like anything like that, uh, air oxygen will seep in here. This will start absorbing those oxides, the, the interstitial elements from the atmosphere, nitrogen, oxygen, carbon, hydrogen. So everything has to be held held tight to form a very inert seal. Uh, I, will, I will be back feeding. So if you notice, I, I, I stab through the, uh, the, the tape here, but I also get tape residue on the tip of the filament over here. Sometimes I'll spin this around, poke the hole through the end there on the tape there, and then I'll feed this through. But essentially I want the tip of the foot metal also make sure this is all clean, no tape residue in there. This will be hugging the pipe. I'll be able to go very close to the tungsten. So basically when I start welding, I'm gonna hold the TIG torch in the middle. I'm not, not gonna do any kind of movement. I'm just gonna, the technique I'm gonna use is just in the middle and I'll explain that in a second. I'm going to be back feeding the root pass here. I'm going to use a keyhole and dab technique. Um, I will be counting the ripples. And I'll be welding quadrants, 6 o'clock to about 3 o'clock, up to about here. Everything will be held perpendicular. Uh, when I stop welding, the inside here will be glowing red. Uh, I will see it glowing red and it'll, it'll cool down in temperature. When I turn silver, uh, I'll count for about 7 seconds and then I'll kind of ease off. I'll remove the fill metal, I'll inspect the end, the tip of the fill metal, see if there's any oxidization. If it's all nice and silver, that indicates that inside the, the atmosphere inside the pipe is inert, down to less than 20 parts per million, and I'll have no oxidization on the tip of the fill metal. I'll have no oxidize, oxidization on the root pass here. So the purge monitor here is reading 13 parts per million of oxygen inside here. While I start the weld, what I'll do is I'll just take this out now, you do not need this for, if you're practicing purposes here, you don't need this. You could actually just have a nice little hole in the top there. This is just a luxury kind of item. And if you're serious about titanium, this is very nice to have. So the welding machine I'm using, I have high frequency arc initiation. And when I hold this, this TIG torch on there, and I don't have to do any kind of movements, I don't have to do a lift arc, a scratch start or anything, I can just hold everything in place. It'll protect the depositing atmosphere in the pipe. I can put the foot pedal or the thumb switch down. It'll ignite the arc. When I'm done welding, I can extinguish the arc and I can still protect the deposits of metal. So I'll count for about seven seconds of purge the whole atmosphere. For the fit up here, I'm using a 1.8 gap. So if I use a 1.8 tungsten, if I hold the tungsten in the middle with this 1.8 gap, I have enough surface area where holding it in the middle will melt the top bevel edge and the bottom bevel, bevel edge at the same time. My only concern is just moving in this direction and just making sure I have a nice keyhole. So the first thing I'll do is I'll take a look at the tip of the fill metal, nice and silver. That's an indication that inside the root here, it'll be all nice and silver. I looked at my deposit of metal through uh, the top here. I can see everything. It's nice and silver. Uh, what I'll do is I'll count for seven seconds after that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I like to ease off and just kind of look at the deposit of metal, make sure it's all nice and perfect and there's no heat tint. So this is a, a fluke thermometer. This will kind of tell me how hot this material is. The inner pass temperature of titanium is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, but I'll check it one inch away and let's take a look at the, what the, the weld looks like here. Now, I did 80 ripples, so I am at about probably 157 uh, Fahrenheit. When I stopped welding, it was probably anywhere from 200 uh, and less. So I'm at about 156, 157 degrees Fahrenheit, one inch away. So certain metals you can use the temp stick on. Uh, aluminum would get porosity big time. Titanium, you'd, ugh, you don't want to get, uh, you want to get any temple stick or any of that crayons or nothing 
in the deposit of metal. It'll cause uh, lots, lots of problems. But this is very effective, this fluke thermometer. What I like to use is I like to use a reciprocating saw. It's a rigid model. It's a very nice, slim and trim line. And I like to use these uh, blades here. And I'll just cut out the tack. If I have any oxides on the tack, I'll just put the reciprocating saw at an angle. And I'll just kind of scratch out those oxides if they do exist. Those are gone. Scratch there. And that's gone there too. Now I want to prep the land there. So what I'll do is I'll shine the flashlight in there and I'll ensure that the, the edge of the land there is really sharp, nice and sharp. I don't want it rounded on the root. On the inside, I want a nice transition. So when I start welding, I get a really nice tie-in. So with the titanium, because I use the reciprocating saw, I have a lot of the filings from the titanium. What I'll do is I'll just kind of brush those filings off and I'm removing and any uh, sharp, sharp edges from the reciprocating saw. I'll just nicely smooth them out with the uh, stainless steel hand brush. Also brushing in one direction. So this will switch down over to the other hand here. This will be a left-handed side, going like that. I'll kind of eyeball it about 90, 90 degrees. This looks about right, yeah, so about that. Uh, sometimes I'll have about this much stick out with the uh, ceramic cup going inside. Now the other thing with the ceramic cup too, certain companies they don't want you to use ceramic cup, they want you to use the glass. And the reason why for the glass is because, well the ceramic cup will absorb a lot of the energy and expel a lot of the energy affecting the heat of X zone. It'll also absorb trace gases from the atmosphere which will also emit into the weld where the glass won't necessarily do that. Um, it also reflects uh, heat which will reflect into your heat effect zone. Where the glass, the glass won't necessarily absorb trace elements from the atmosphere and it won't necessarily affect heat and it actually does not heat up and the heat lingers within the, the composition of the ceramic cup. The glass will kind of just cool down and dissipate and, and have more control over the heat effect zone on the titanium. But it's mostly about the contamination possibility with the ceramic cup. So that's why uh, a lot of companies that are welding titanium would prefer that you use the glass, not the ceramic. And now I could just tape it back up and it'd be ready to start welding again. So I'm doing this in quadrants. I'm doing the bottom quadrant first because when you do the bottom, especially on large diameter piping, the top quadrants just get a better purge. When I, the more root pass I get in, the lower the parts per million of oxygen drop and the faster they drop. So it's in four different quadrants and uh, this will be the root pass. So I have two tacks left. I'm going to cut out the tack at 3 o'clock here, cut the 12 o'clock tack out as well, prep this. Now I'm at 3 o'clock here and 9 o'clock here evenly. Uh, I can see that, okay, my, my left hand side will, will a little bit wider, so I'll do the right hand side, let it cool down, prep the area from 9 o'clock, prep the area from 12 o'clock, and then weld from 9 to 12. So for the fill pass, it's kind of like a fill, in hot, well, a hot fill pass, but basically I'll use a pulsing technique. So I set the machine to 250 amps, probably 200 amps, and a little bit of pausing is probably good enough. This is a 532 fill metal. I'll use a lay wire technique. I'll give a surge of current, it'll create a puddle, it'll wash out and I'll drop the current. Uh, leave the high frequency on, I'll move to the leading edge there, surge of current, uh, wash it out, drop the current, keep the high frequency on, move the leading edge, repeat again. So it's ripple after ripple after ripple. And that will be the technique for the uh, hot fill pass. Now when it comes to a depositing metal on titanium, and uh, especially cap passes and fill passes, you can do anything you want, anything you want just as long as it is protected within the inert gas atmosphere, trailing shield. When I was taught at GRB College of Welding, I was given, uh, this is February of 2013, I wasn't given a trailing shield. I was given a size eight ceramic cup and a size 12 ceramic cup. Basically what you do is when you do the root pass, you give a little surge of current and you, you will be using foot pedal. I was showing how to weld with the foot pedal, also for the thumb switch. Give a little surge of current You'll create a ripple and then you'll drop the current but keep the high frequency on. It'll protect that deposit of metal. And then uh, seven seconds when it turns silver, then you go to the leading edge, create another ripple. Uh, for the root pass, you can actually use a size 12 cup and you could do a couple different ripples, have at uh, X amount of current, say 80 amps, say. Keep the current on, add a couple of ripples, maybe six to eight ripples, and then you stop, you keep the high frequency on and it protects that three quarters of an inch. Then you come along, check it with a temple stick. At the time, temple stick will uh, contaminate the deposit metal. But when it comes to learning, that's fine. Um, 
thermometer or infrared uh, gun for checking the temperature. Say you do eight ripples, that could be 200, 250 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, when you're doing the filling and capping, uh, I would have had, back in 2013 in February, I would have had really giant ripples. When I was doing the cap pass, the root pass would have been 332 or 18. The fill pass would have been 532. Big, big ripples. And the cap pass would have been one giant ripple is what I would have done. Now for the trailing shell on titanium, it basically protects the deposit metal away from those interstitial elements of nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, carbon. So it, it doesn't get into the different uh, uh, crystal lattice and cause a lot of problems in between the different atoms. With the titanium, I can do really anything I want, just as long as, as it is protected uh, with the inert atmosphere. On the cap pass here, for so I put a two pass cap. I could change the uh, appearance of the weld any which way I want as long as it is protected within the inert gas atmosphere of the trailing shield here. So I can do whatever I want. And I have the foot pedal or thumb switch so I can have control over li liquefaction and solidification of the weld puddle. This titanium fill metal just sticks to the pipe. The reason why is because it forms a very sticky oxide on the tip of the fill metal. Once the fill metal senses heat, it just sticks to everything. But the oxide, if it, if it senses any form of ox oxygen, then it'll oxidize, it'll, it'll turn very doughy, especially if it senses the heat. So this thing just sticks to the pipe. It's a little bit of oxide, but it just sticks to the pipe. So you're better off just lay wiring it. Uh, if you can uh, move the TIG torch to the filament metal and manage to liquefy it and pull it away, then you can get away with doing that too. But I'll be holding the current on, the filament metal in, and I'll just kind of be feeding into it and moving very, very slowly. And I end up with a, a deposition that looks glass-like. There's no ripples, there's no nothing, it's just uh, glass-like basically. Very nice and pretty. Now, when I do the top pass here, and you'll see it, I'm changing up the technique for a different visual. Up here, I'm just dabbing, dabbing, dabbing. So I have these little microscopic ripple definitions. The cap pass will be, the top will be these microscopic ripples, and the bottom will be kind of like a glass-like appearance. Well, there you go, that's uh, titanium. It can be a very difficult and challenging material, especially if titanium is zirconium and other metals. Uh, I will be dealing with different metals here, so you will see uh, future videos with me. Uh, if you have any questions about titanium, you can reach out to me, Crossfield underscore TX on my Instagram. And you can also go to the uh, Wildlife Store, wildlife.com, the different welding helmets. Thank you. Visit wildlife.com and shop our best-selling premium welding goods shown in this video.